Good morning, everybody. The intention of the Mass is for the people of the parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, Father, Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself from among yourselves, from your own brothers. To him you must listen. This is what you yourselves asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly. Do not let me hear again, you said, the voice of the Lord my God nor look any longer on this great fire, or I shall die. And the Lord said to me, All they have spoken is well said. I will raise up a prophet like yourself for them, from their own brothers. I will put my words into his mouth, and he shall tell them all I command him. The man who does not listen to my words that he speaks in my name shall be held answerable to me for it. But the prophet who presumes to say in my name a thing I have not commanded him to say, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Come, ring out our joy to the Lord. Hail the rock who saves us. Let us come before him giving thanks. With songs, let us hail the Lord. Oh, oh that, that today, today you would listen, listen to his voice. Harden, harden not your hearts. Come in, let us kneel and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. Oh, that, oh, that today, today you would listen, listen to his, his voice, voice. Harden, harden not your, your hearts. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day at Massah in the desert, when your fathers put me to the test, 
when they tried me, though they saw my work. Oh, that that today today you would would listen listen to his his voice, voice. harden not not your your hearts. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would like to see you free from all worry, an unmarried man can devote himself to the Lord's affairs. All he need worry about is pleasing the Lord. But a married man has to bother about the world's affairs and devote himself to pleasing his wife. He is torn two ways. In the same way, an unmarried woman, like a young girl, can devote herself to the Lord's affairs. All she need worry about is being holy in body and spirit. The married woman, on the other hand, has to worry about the world's affairs and devote herself to pleasing her husband. I say this only to help you, not to put a halter around your necks, but simply to make sure that everything is as it should be and that you give your undivided attention to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for revealing the mysteries of the kingdom to mere children. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. Jesus and his followers went as far as Capernaum, and as soon as the Sabbath came, Jesus went to the synagogue and began to teach. And his teaching made a deep impression on them because, unlike the scribes, he taught them with authority. In their synagogue, just then, there was a man possessed by an unclean spirit, and he shouted, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus said sharply, Be quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit threw the man into convulsions, and with a loud cry went out of him. The people were so astonished that they started asking each other what it all meant. Here is a teaching that is new, they said, and with authority behind it. He gives orders even to unclean spirits, and they obey him. And his reputation rapidly spread everywhere through all the surrounding Galilean countryside. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The prophet was a spokesman, a mouthpiece for God, one who spoke on his behalf to the people. Frequently, a prophet prefaced his words with the phrase, Thus says the Lord. This phrase indicated that the prophet was speaking not on his own authority, but solely on God's authority, according as God had manifested his will to him. God promised through Moses that one day he would send a great prophet, as we heard in the first reading. After the resurrection, the church understood that this promise was eminently fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Actually, Jesus was much more than a prophet. He spoke on his own authority. Not once did he preface his remarks with the usual phrase, thus says the Lord God. Rather, he proclaimed, I say to you, it was a bold departure, one which did not go unnoticed. When the evangelist Mark begins telling his story of the ministry of Jesus, 
He shows us how Jesus is invested with the power of the Spirit at his baptism and thus acts with authority. The power that moves Jesus has its source in God. When Jesus teaches, something actually happens. It is not a matter of words decorating the air. Jesus is teaching, created an impression because people can see change for good, which it affects in the broken and the crippled and the dispossessed. In today's gospel, Jesus' is teaching is seen in action. In the first public work of his ministry, there is a confrontation between two superpowers, the power of God and the power of darkness. While Jesus is teaching in the synagogue, he is interrupted by the shouts of a man possessed, a man who has no authority over his body or spirit. He is not in charge of his own life. And when Jesus speaks, he commands the power that dominates the man's life to leave him alone. At Jesus' command, the man is freed. The people are astonished and marvel at Jesus' teaching. Here is a teaching that is new and with authority behind it. He uses his power to liberate people from the evil forces that dominate their lives. We may think that we are more sophisticated than the people of Jesus' time when they attributed what they attributed to the presence of unclean spirits, we would perhaps classify as epilepsy or some form of psychosis such as schizophrenia. Yet we would be unfair to today's gospel if we were to say that it does not describe the real exorcism of real devils. After all, modern psychiatry does not satisfactorily indicate the origin of all disturbances, especially those particular cases in which there are no organic causes. We would be naive indeed if we were to think that a psychiatric description explains away the power of the devil in all instances. When we need, yes, we need modern psychiatry, but we must not be so gullible as that it alone or any human force can be the savior of the world. For his bold and unambiguous teaching about the reality of the devil and of the devil and demons. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church reinforces this teaching when it says, every time we pray their Father, we humbly ask that we would be delivered from evil. In this petition, evil is not an abstraction, but refers to a person Satan, the evil one, the angel who opposes God. God in his mercy has given us the healing sacraments of the church so that we can be healed and restored to health. The Eucharist is the supreme sacrament of healing and specifically the sacrament of anointing and reconciliation. This does not mean, of course, that we don't seek medical intervention, but we can also seek to be prayed with and over by the church for God's deliverance from the power of evil. Today, let us renew our faith in the Lord Jesus. He says to each one of us, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the offertory. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending thy spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
congratulations to Kevin Powell, the winner of the 500 club draw. And also please remember to pray for Margaret Maddox, who received news of her passing last week. The date for her funeral will be announced later. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.